guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History, where history doesn't have to be dead. In fact, history is alive all over the globe. And right now, Venezuela is where it's living itself out. You have tens of thousands of students in the streets, and you're really on the cusp of a revolution. So I think it's so important that we understand what's going on in our hood, in our world. So thanks for clicking the button. Let's learn the very basics about Venezuela. I would start with geography, guys. You definitely want to know that it's in our hood. Venezuela is in northeastern South America. It's not that far from Cuba, and of course, Cuba, you know, geographically is just a stone's throw from Florida. So Venezuela is pretty close to the United States, not to mention its humongous, mad oil resources. Venezuela is a member of OPEC, and much of its history really has kind of you know, ridden the wave in the crests of the oil market. Um, but I think that if we want to understand just historically where we are, we would probably start around 1820, 1830, where you throw off Spanish colonization, um, Simone Bolivar and the Bolivar kind of revolutions that sweep South America, um, gain independence for Venezuela around 1830. So from 1830 to 1858, Venezuela is like mad cray cray. I believe they had 50 presidents, 12 coup d'etats and revolutions. Um, it's not good. And then in 1958, you sort of have kind of like a democracy republic form that's really a two-party duopoly, um, and many would, people would say by corrupted power. You had the, uh, the Christian Democrats and Democracy Action, which ruled that country from 1958 to 1999. And that condition, I think, allowed someone like Hugo Chavez, Hugo Chavez, to step in and take power in 1999. Now, he was elected president. He did um, try an earlier coup, but he was elected in 19. And ruled from 1999 to 2013. This is Chavism or the Bolivarian Revolution, and really kind of Venezuela for Venezuela. Um, he had oil diplomacy where he shared his oil resources with you know Latin American countries, kind of pan Latin Americanism. He's kind of like a Fidel Castro. He sees himself like as a neo Simone Bolivar, and he's not just against uh, the right. He's also against what he would be you know, called neo uh, liberals or neo liberalism, like the. World Bank and uh, the IMF kind of blaming these outsiders for the woes of Venezuela. But whatever you want to think about Hugo Chavez, he passes away in March of 2013 and in steps this dude. And this is Nicolas Maduro. Nicolas Maduro is currently the president of Venezuela. He believes in Chavism, um, but he's not Hugo Chavez. And since he took over in 2013, the numbers for Venezuela have gotten horrifically worse. Uh, they're looking at 60% in inflation. Um, I believe uh, their junk bond status now. Uh, they have 50% uh, increases and deficit spending, and where their currency was rated to the dollar at 8 to 1 under Chavez, it's 87 to 1 now. You have humongous shortages. People can't buy like milk and bread and butter, the essentials. And once you do that, people hit the streets. Not to mention the murder rate, 24,000 deaths last year in Venezuela. Caracas, uh, the capital, is one of the most dangerous cities in the world. I believe there's a murder every two hours. So um, on February 12th of this year, um, on Venezuela, Venezuela Youth Day, the kids or the college students, the youth of Venezuela took to the streets and those numbers grew pretty quickly and that's where you started getting violence. You had three um, protesters or student marchers shot dead on that day and that's really what I think blew those protests up. And then a few days ago, Genesis Cremona, who's a beauty queen um, in Caracas, she was shot dead. Right there you can see the picture and now you have a martyr. Now you have a huge tension between the people on the streets and the government. And what does the government do? What does Maduro do? He arrests the opposition leader. <laughs> the opposition leader, Leopoldo Lopez, um, who's kind of the main opposition leader, was charged with murder for the students that were protesting that the government killed. Um, the murder charges were later changed to, I believe, conspiracy and arson. Ten years in jail the guy might get, and he's in jail right now um, calling on the students to keep protesting. So what has the government done since then? The government's doing like uh, shutting down of internet and rolling energy cutoffs, um, throwing out the outsiders. CNN's been tossed out. The uh, agency, the news agency in Colombia was tossed out. And there's really no freedom of speech right now in Venezuela. The world is having a hard time watching. So I think that we need to watch and we need to find out what's going on in Venezuela. So there's the basics. I hope you're a little bit smarter. You know the main characters 
Jefferson, kind of the sketch of the land. So giddy up for that. If you haven't checked out Hip Hughes History, do a little of the YouTube on the EDU, baby. And check out by clicking my face. You'll shoot off where you have over 200 videos. Okay, guys, thanks for growing your brain. Where attention goes, energy flows. We'll see you next time when we do some of the teachings on the YouTubes.